Thanks for coming in uh, to the call today. If you have any questions, again, you can ask them in the Q and A box down below. I'll get to those. Um, I'll get to those uh, at the end of the presentation. So the presentation will go about uh, 45 minutes, I anticipate, and then I'll open up the questions after. Uh, I just saw someone ask about the Toronto market. If you do have questions on the Toronto market, I can talk about that as well. Um, but yes, why buy Calgary? Um, that's me. If you had a chance uh, to watch this video, it's, it's a great video. Basically, I, I explain in five minutes how... Um, I profited uh, to over two hundred thousand dollars by uh, investing in one property in Calgary and then selling it uh, the year after. So um, I encourage you to watch that video. It's a good video. Um, it shows that you can make money in Calgary. So since we've been doing investing and in, and coaching people since twenty nineteen, one of the biggest objections are you'll never make money in Calgary. So um, well, I did, uh, and uh, there's a video for it. So. Uh, Anyways, my name is Alex J. Wilson, owner and broker record at REMAX Wealth Builders Real Estate. I've been selling real estate in Toronto for over 12 years, number one REMAX agent in Ontario for individual tax transactions 2019. I was number three in Canada uh, in 2021, um, 13th highest REMAX agent in Canada, individual 2020, I'm currently 14th in Canada right now, and I'm actually 20th in the world. Uh, right now. Uh, for those that follow me on Instagram, uh, they would have saw that post today. Uh, inducted in the REMAX Hall of Fame, awarded the REMAX Lifetime Achievement Award at 35, and awarded the Circle of Legends Award earlier this year. I'm currently 40, uh, but none of that matters to any of you. you know, that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, what I want to talk about is in investing, and uh, I've been on my journey since 2012. And that's when I turned a, a $39,300 deposit into a $14 million condo portfolio. And that number is outdated. Uh, the portfolio is worth $20 million now. Um, I just need to update all the numbers. And there's some math that comes with that. Uh, it includes 14 condos, a Hyde Park triplex, an apartment building in Hamilton, and also now a detached home in um, Hyde Park as well. If you watch the other video explained in five minutes, how I how I bought uh, two homes worth $5.5 million with, I think it was $25,000. Um, you'll see that. That's that's another video on the YouTube channel. Um, but overall, why I show these slides right at the beginning is to show my investment journey and what I've been able to achieve. And every single one of you can achieve this as well. Real estate is all about buying and holding and yes, maybe like Alex, you started off with a slide saying you, you sold a property. Um, I explained that in, in my five-minute video, but sometimes you you shuffle your portfolio around. And I was looking at buying a house in Toronto because my wife told me to. Uh, so I shuffled something around. Um, but this is the portfolio here. And why it's relevant is I want to show the value of real estate over time. So the current market value of the portfolio is nearly $15 million on this slide. Um, but in 30 years, it'll be worth $36 million fully paid off. And this is calculated at a 3% compounded annual growth rate, growth rate, and it's been paid off by other people. So other people are living in the property, covering the expenses of the property, covering the mortgage, covering the maintenance expenses and it went while it's going up in value. And then in 30 years, every single more rent payment. And when that mortgage payment is made, it pays down part of that that outstanding principal on the mortgage. So in 30 years, you will have an asset outright. So when you look at that, and this is really, really cool, and inflation's in the news. Um, but when you look at that, and when you adjust that number for inflation, that actually works out to a portfolio in today's dollars, with today's purchasing power of nearly $21 million. And that's so cool because in 30 years, that means I'll have $21 million in today's purchasing power. And what does that mean? So if I have $21 million free and clear at a 5% rate of return, annual rate of return, that means that the portfolio can pay me um, over a million dollars per year at a, con at a conservative 5% uh, rate of return. Most people seek much higher returns than that. I'm just keeping it as conservative as possible. And if I wanted to reinvest 2% per year to protect against inflation, I could live off $624,000 per year um, just if I stopped right now. 
once in 30 years, once the portfolio is paid off by the, the people that live in the properties for me. Now you may think, Alex, that number is so big. Um, how I, I, I can't achieve that. Well, you don't need to, you, you, you don't need that much. Um, you know, let's put it down in bite size, understandable numbers. So if you have a million dollar portfolio, which may seem a lot like a lot, but you're not putting a million dollars down. So when we look at Calgary, and this is where we see the opportunity in Calgary, it's a low cost of entry. If you buy, let's say a $400,000 condo in Calgary, um, you're in it for 10% now. So it'd be a 10% deposit now. And when you close in the property in 27, 2027, you can have another 40 because you have to put 20% down on an investment property. So it's only $80,000 that you, you're, you're investing in the property. And then over 30 years, the balance of the mortgage would be paid off. And when you, so that's nearly half right there of a million dollar portfolio. So if you have a million dollar portfolio in 30 years, that portfolio in today's purchasing power will be able to pay you $70,000 per year a million dollar portfolio today once it goes up in value. Um and that and that's at a three percent compounded annual growth rate, which again we've seen things grow at a much faster rate. A two million dollar portfolio, $140,000 today's purchasing power. So really, really cool by holding things long term. So now that I have you thinking in that mindset, you know, you can use your home to fund to fund your future to to fund your future pension. So to create a pension fund. So keep your home in retirement, leverage existing equity now in your now to fund your retirement. Each $350,000 condo represents over $24,000 of annual income in retirement year. So what I mean by this, what I mean by this is that some people think, oh, I'll just sell my house and that'll be my retirement at 60. But what if you leverage the appreciation on the property now out of the house and invested that? And you see, so now you have two properties going up in value instead of one. So that's how you can use your home to create a pension fund. And that's what I've done over the last 12 years. Now let's talk about why Calgary. We have you at that investing mindset. So, so why Calgary? And the, the great thing is, is that I've been doing these presentations since 2019 and, and to see the evolution and, and see how, you know, people were so down on Calgary in 2019 and, and, and watch the tides change over the last three years. Um, well, I guess 2019, when I started this, there was no COVID. So the world's changed a lot. So why Calgary? It's number one most livable city in North America for the last uh, two years, located in the foothills of the Canadian Rockies, fourth most livable city in the world, um, loads of green space, top five on the Economist Intelligent Units Global Livability in Index, second lowest cost of living of of Canadian cities and ninth lowest in North America. It's an incredibly affordable place to live. So when I started looking at Calgary, I'm like, well, these are these are a lot of good things. These are the surface things. Then from from a nature perspective, uh, again, you know, amplified in COVID, uh, it's the sunniest city in Canada with an average of 2,300 sun-filled hours a year. The most extensive outdoor pathway. Like the the path network is amazing out there. What I mean about the path network, just these trails that go all around the, around the downtown core. And then you have rivers and you, you, you can take bikes to run or scooters around the rivers. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, and, and because of that, it's ranked the set ranked second for healthiest lifestyle. So you're, you're in, you're in the Rockies, like the Rockies are at your doorstep. You have five world-class ski resorts within two hours, over 200 tra biking trails in Banff National Park, which is truly a global destination. You know, people travel from all over the world to come to Banff and, and, and play in the Rocky Mountains. And you're only an hour and a half drive away from that. Excuse me, I'm just going to blow my nose quickly. We, we are recording this, so hopefully I'll edit that nose blow out. Um, so, so, so you have nature at your doorstep and that 1.5 hours, that's a real 1.5 hours. That's not like a Muskoka. Hey, Muskoka is two hours North of Toronto, but you got to leave it two in the morning to, to achieve that with no traffic. There is no traffic to deal with to get out to Banff. So why is Alex investing in Calgary? So that was the surface stuff when I started um, exploring Calgary in 2019, because I, I saw an attractive market at an attractive price point. So I wanted to look at the economics behind it. So first of all, we are in the business when you're buying real estate, you're, you're investing in roofs overheads. So if you're investing in roofs overheads, you want to make sure that population is growing. And they've seen net population growth 
2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, 2020 to 2021. So even during the COVID pandemic years of 20 to 21, where other um, urban areas were shrinking, they still saw net population growth in in Calgary and Alberta. Alberta during COVID actually had the highest highest interprovincial growth into interprovincial migration levels between uh, behind all the provinces. So most people during COVID moved to Alberta. Uh, from a money standpoint, Calgary has the highest millionaires per capita of all the major Canadian cities, and Calgary represents the highest wages and salaries per employee in Canada, and that was at 66000 in 2018. But this is where it gets really, really exciting. So when we look over the next two decades, by 2043, Alberta's population is set to increase by 48% and will be larger than BC by, by, by in two decades. Versus Ontario's population is set to increase by only 24%, which is still great. 24% uh, is still great population growth, but Alberta is going to grow at double that rate. And, and again, anyone's watched my presentation before, they know this slide. The next one's new. This is, this is really exciting. So, and this was in the Globe and Mail that just this past weekend. Canada's population is booming and we aren't building nearly enough homes. So I said that... Alberta is going to experience 48% population growth over the next two decades. Well, Calgary, being in Alberta, is going to grow by 62.5% over the next two decades. It's currently 1.6 million people. It's going to add another million people over the next two decades. Isn't that a crazy, crazy number? So they're going to go from 1.6 to 2.6. So if you're in the business, of investing in roofs overheads, that number should excite you. And and it and I I almost fell off my chair when I read that. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is absolutely incredible. So that this is again, Southern Ontario is going to get their people. And and when they when in this article and again, it's in the Global Mail search, Canada's population is booming, and we are building it nearly enough homes. You read the whole article. Um, Alberta. Ontario and British Columbia are the three provinces that are going to experience uh, the majority of that population boom. Uh, the Maritimes are actually going to go down in population, uh, and Quebec's going to stay level. So these three provinces are going to get the majority of the people, and Alberta is going to see the most people. And then when we look, let's look at the money. So we, got the, we know that the people are coming there. And that, this is Statistic Canada data. This is not made up. This is Statistics Canada that's coming out with these numbers. Calgary is the four, fourth in Canada for economic output. So behind the big three, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary is number four for economic output. Um, its economic output is larger than provinces. It's larger than the economic output of Saskatchewan. It's larger than the economic output of Manitoba. Um, so you're you're buying in an area you're investing in an area or i invested in an area where i i see the largest population growth and they make a lot of money out there too so buy low and sell high so what happened in calgary and this is this is why i'm so bullish on calgary what happened in calgary in 2017 um it was run up to 2017 but oil prices were going down and, and you had this big building boom in Calgary um, that started in 2014, because that's when oil was $100 per barrel. And then oil, oil prices started to come down. And then you saw mass layoffs in the oil and gas industry in 2017. Uh, and we saw new uh, condo sale price, they dropped by 21% in 2017. So we actually have prices drop in Calgary. And why do they drop? Well, when you have mass layoffs, that impacted... Uh, the uh, the jobs and because people weren't working, there was less people to buy homes and and you saw prices go down and they stayed down for a while because there was a lot of negative news and and you had um, you had a lot of building that happened, a lot of office building that happened um, and now these office spaces uh, were sitting empty. Um, but then moving forward, uh, what you had, is uh, tech companies starting to move into these vacant office space. And we're going to get much deeper into that on following slides. But I want to talk more about oil and gas. And 
when I started doing these presentations, 2019, uh, 2020, 2021, um, oil and gas wasn't on my radar um, because there was no conflict uh, in in Europe at the time. Um, so one of the, but I would tell people one of the biggest issues about Alberta oil was um, distribution. So because Alberta is landlocked, it's very hard to get the oil out of Alberta. Uh, but what you have being built currently, and it's scheduled to clean in 2023, and as Canadians, we own it as a trans mountain pipeline, which will then go to um, go through to go to BC and then and then go on to container ships and being to export around the world. And guess what? Um, I think uh, Canadian oil is very attractive right now because uh, when we look at oil producers around the world uh, and oil reserves, uh, we're basically, we have the largest amount of oil reserves, uh, but we're the only country that is um, a democracy. It's not a, um, a dictatorship or, 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 or something that, 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 that that can be swayed by government. So if we look at the energy crisis that, that's being experienced right now in Europe, they're looking for secure energy streams and that's what Canadian can Canada can offer. And it's not just um, oil and gas, it's all commodities and we're a commodity-based country. So uh, this is very, very good for, for Canada moving forward. Um, so distribution diversification. So distribution was the oil and gas, which they're working on increasing the distribution. But there's also the diversification. So um, here, here's the great thing about Calgary's and, and, and the growth that we're starting to see now. It's not based on oil and gas. Again, the, those layoffs already happened, right? So, so the, the industry is running lean. Where the growth is coming in Calgary right now is, um, is, is tech. So so Calgary is outpaced, outpaced from a tech workforce standpoint, everyone else in North America. So you're seeing large growth in the tech sector in Calgary. Why is that? Well, Calgary ranked in the global top 10 most attractive cities workers. Calgary has the highest proportion of STEM graduates of major Canadian cities. So if I'm a technology company, um, yeah, I need people that have certain degrees and that's degrees in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, but the big one, low cost office space, 20%, 27% vacancy. So why do they have low cost office space? Why is there so much vacancy? Remember, we go back to 2017, we had these mass layoffs in the oil and gas industry. And before that, you had a mass building boom in Calgary for, for, for office space. So you had all this office space sitting empty um, and you had the fortunes of oil and gas fall. So who's going to work there? Well, let's put technology companies in. Let's diversify the economy. And that's what we're experiencing now. That's we're we're experiencing the the fruit of that labor. Um, Calgary is home to 435 uh, technology companies. Three quarters of them are startups. There are more than 2,000 open tech jobs in the city, and a record 44,500 Calgarians are working in tech right now. As tech has grown, so is the number of companies that are moving into downtown space because of the affordability. So let's talk about that affordability. So Calgary downtown space leases for. Uh, an average of seventeen fifty per foot. Edmonton is twenty three percent more. Toronto is double. Calgary, uh, Vancouver is nearly triple uh, what uh, what Calgary is. So Calgary is an affordable place for these tech companies to open up. And these startups, these three quarters of startups, are now starting to come to. Um, hitting unicorn status. So what does unicorn status mean? Unicorn status means these companies reach a billion dollar valuation. So Benivity was one of the one of the more recent ones. Um, it hit uh, unicorn status in December 4th, 2020. Um, before that, you had Solium Capital, which sold to Morgan Stanley for 1.1 billion in 2019. You had Parveris Therapeutics, um, which sold to San Francisco-based biotechnology company, uh, Genetech uh, that same year. So you, so you started to see these, these, these unicorns start to develop out of Calgary, which is incubator in this low cost office space. Um, and what happens is that when you have these uh, companies hit unicorn status, 
you have number one, you have the founders of these companies, they start reinvesting back in their market because they're in that same eco space and they know their friends that have companies that are starting up that may have good ideas and they, they fund them with capital. You have other venture capitalists and private equity funds that they see companies um, hitting unicorn status there and like, I want to get in making that money. They start they start investing and exploring in that area. So so then it becomes comes a uh, a snowball effect. You see more and more money rolling rolling into the area because they see these opportunities that are happening. Um, Neo Financial is the latest one. Um, excuse me. Neo Financial uh, being the latest uh, tech unicorn. Uh, and just to give you an idea of the growth, Neo Financial's employee headcount has swelled to 650 people, and the company is actively recruiting for another for for more than 100 positions in Calgary. So you're seeing this growth, but it's not just the startup companies. Um, well, uh, here are some more startup companies. I got to let have myself in the slides. Simed had fewer than 20 employees in spring 2019. Today has more than 200. Looking to hire another two. To, they were they were hiring another two to 300 people in 2021. LCM uh, went from three staff to 68 staff, uh, wanted to be by at 150 employees by the end of 2021. Uh, LodgeLink will require 300 new technology-based jobs over the next five years in Calgary, 50,000 square feet more of office space. But this, it's not just those startups, you have international uh, companies that are, are coming to Calgary versus Toronto or Vancouver. So CloudExa, which is uh, EX, ESQ's new Canadian subsidiary, um, you know, they looked at uh, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, and they chose Calgary, and they have offices in Silicon Valley, India, Mexico, Singapore. Um, they chose to open up in Calgary. Infosys. Infosys, one of the largest global IT consulting firms, uh, they announced it will be bringing 500 jobs to Calgary in March 2021. And Basis, another massive global Indian consulting firm, uh, opening Canadian headquarters in Calgary and hire a thousand uh, new tech jobs over the next two years. Um, local, um, and what I mean local, domestic, RBC, uh, bringing 300 tech jobs to Calgary to, in their new innovation hub. ENY, Ernest & Young, they're opening a new uh, hub in Calgary, 200 jobs in Calgary and set up a new finance hub. IBM, this is one of the most recent, IBM is opening a new innovation hub um, and they were opening right across the street from, from Gallery, which is the condo building we recently sold out, 250 new jobs uh, to Calgary. Um, but, so why is this happening? Uh, so we talked about the low cost office space, um, but why, will, why am I confident it's going to continue to happen? Because it's already happened somewhere else. So when I look down to the States, you see companies leaving Silicon Valley and moving to Texas. Why are they moving to Texas? Well, they're fleeing high taxes. Well, guess what? Alberta has the lowest corporate tax rate in Canada. Um, they're the most business-friendly province out there. There's no land transfer tax or development charges, no provincial uh, sales tax. So from a taxation level, Alberta, lowest tax in Canada. Uh, expensive housing. So if, if you were trying to find a place in San Francisco to live, you can be making six figures, you're still living on a couch. Uh, Calgary has the second lowest cost of living out of all the major Canadian cities and ninth lowest in North America. Um, you have limited red tape in Alberta. So you have this affordable space so that your employee can actually afford to own or rent and live a high quality lifestyle in, um, in Alberta. So remember, not only is the housing less expensive there, but also you're paying less tax there. So dollar for dollar, their dollar is going much farther. Again, no provincial sales tax, uh, lowest tax rates in Canada. Uh, and then from a government regulation standpoint, uh, what's really cool, and you're, you're, you're going to see it when, when, I, when I get farther along, when I start talking about the, the debt Alberta has, Alberta has the lowest net debt per capita in Canada. Um, and it's... it's other provinces aren't even close, which allows them to make investments and diversify back into the invest uh, into the business community. And that's my next slide here. So uh, I love this slide. So if we look at Ontario, so Ontario, uh, and I'm I live in Ontario, so it should be scary for me. Uh, the net financial debt per capita that the uh, provincial government has is nearly nineteen thousand dollars per individual. Alberta, less than 2,500. The average in Canada is, is 10,000. So less than 2,500 of, of net 
debt per capita, but it gets even better. So what you also have though, is that Alberta is running a massive, massive surplus. So even the, so, so they don't have deficits. Deficits don't exist in Alberta anymore because of the increase in, in oil prices. Alberta has a $13 billion surplus, $13 billion surplus this year, which they're going to use for, to pay down their, their net debt. So they're going to net, uh, knock down the debt of Alberta down to below $80 billion, um, which will rec rec uh, reduce that servicing cost by billions of dollars annually. Um, and they're also forecasting more surpluses in 2023 and 2024. Uh, and that's based on $70 a barrel. So you could see still see a much higher um, surplus in future years based on the price of oil. So the provincial coffers are in a great financial position in Alberta due to where the price of oil is these days. Um, and then, as I said, they're, they're, they're a pro-business um, environment. So no rent control, no foreign buyer tax, no land transfer tax, no provincial sales tax, no development charges. And uh, you know, talking about that investment back into the business community, when COVID hit, they, they immediately sprung into action and did a $10 billion stimulus package, including reducing the corporate taxes. That's what they did. And because of their strong financial position, they're able to do that. Um, now we're talking about the, the Calgary market overall. And again, love these slides, love these slides. Because like, I've been doing since 2019 to, to, to see what I said would happen and what is happening now. It, it's really cool. So uh, the vacancy rate in when I started, when I started promoting investing in Calgary, the vacancy rate in Calgary was six point five percent. We're down now to a one percent and sometimes less than one percent vacancy rate in Calgary, and we've seen this year nearly thirty percent increase in rents. Um, it's 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 amazing. Um, so so from an investment standpoint, we're seeing um, a big jump in rent, uh, and we're seeing a jump in valuations of the properties as well. Um, also, because we get we get a lot of questions about the condos. Well, the, the the condos have jumped significantly, significantly this year. So we've seen condo sales rise sixty six percent year to date over twenty twenty one, and row houses rise by fifty four percent year to date over twenty twenty one. So um, that's not prices; that's the amount of sales that have, that occurred in the market. Why? Um, because it's it's affordability thing, and I used to talk about this in 2013 and 2014 in Toronto. People are like, why are you buying condos in Toronto? Why don't you buy houses? Which I do, which I which I have houses too. But condos are just concrete boxes in the sky; they're nice and easy. And from an affordability perspective, you know, first time buyers, you know, typically what they can afford their first property. Um, is going to be a condo. So we're seeing that happen now in Calgary, a resurgence to the, the condo market in Calgary. So, and, and we've seen the appetite of our investors. So Savannah condos, we sold out in 2021. Frontier condos, we sold out in 2021. Cavello condos, we sold out early, earlier this year. That's in the same location of Arthur, which we'll talk a little bit more about once our latest release in Calgary. Skyview North, up in that same area, we sold that out in 2022. Harlow Condos, we sold out in 2022. And Lockwood, we sold out in 2022. And when we look at the pricing of these developments, you know, we're pricing in the mid threes to low 400,000s. I'm not even getting a studio at that price uh, here in, in the Toronto area. And then I get zero closing costs, which I've been through the process. It's literally zero closing costs. So um, you know, if you watch the explained in five minutes video, you know, I talk about, well, in, Tor in Toronto, uh, I'd have my land transfer tax, my double land transfer tax. I'd have my, my development charges be probably about $20,000. Then I'd have my HST rebate that I'd be dealing with. I don't have to deal with any of that here. Um, so our latest development, which is, um, Arthur condos, which is up in the Northeast area of Calgary in the, um, cityscape neighborhood. And what's cool. And I, I didn't. I, for some reason, I didn't have it in my earlier slides, but Amazon is making a $4.3 billion investment in, in Calgary. They're building a new um, web services, cloud computing um, uh, location 
10 minutes north of where these Arthur condos are going. So they're building on the existing site of their uh, current distribution center. So a 10 minute drive away from Arthur condos, they're going to have this massive $4.3 billion um, investment with anticipated 950 jobs that they're going to be opening up. Uh, it's only the second in Canada. Uh, the other cloud computing hub is in Montreal, and this is going to be the cloud computing hub for Western Canada. And and about the the area, the, the cityscape, uh, Skyview range area. When I look at population growth, so we talked about the Calgary population growing by 62 and a half percent over the, the next, um, the next, uh, two decades. You know, we look at the, the population growth that we've been seeing in the Skyview ranch, um, area, and this has been the fastest growing area in Calgary. Um, seeing uh, nearly 250% growth by 2034. Uh, and why is that? The The population of this area is predominantly Southeast Asian. Um, and when we look at population growth and we look at, okay, well, where are new Canadians going to be coming from? Um, Southeast Asia is one of the largest um, areas where new Canadians are going to come from. And where are they going to live? Well, they're going to live where where they have family or they have friends or they have like culture. And this is the area that they're going to be starting to settle into. Um, so I'm going to open up the floor. Um, but Nish, are you there? Can you jump on? I, 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 want, I want you to talk about quickly, um, since you've personally invested in the Skyview Ranch cityscape, cityscape neighborhood and taken possession of a property, uh, the uh, jump in value that you've experienced and the rental uh, jump over the rental guarantee that you experienced. There we go. Can you? Hey, uh, nice. can you... How you doing? Fantastic, Alex. Thank you. You can hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. As I said, why don't you talk about? So you you invested in a Yorktown unit uh, in 2021. Uh, so one of the one of the first the first project we sold for for Truman. Um, so you were an early investor. Uh, so why don't you tell them what you bought it for, what it got appraised at, um, and what it's currently being rented for right now? Yeah, absolutely. So this was back in June of 2021, and uh, the townhouse condo that I purchased was 369,000. And, uh, you know, I wasn't anticipating the type of increase that I eventually saw when the bank appraised the property, but I took possession of it on the 2nd of August. So, you know, just over a month ago and the bank appraisal, which was done about a month or so prior to the mortgage being finalized, came in at 475. So this was over a hundred thousand dollars in less than a year for a townhouse condo, which I thought was phenomenal. I was really happy with the rental guarantee program that Truman had, um, which was for three years, $1,900. I was thrilled. Of course, fast forward to, uh, to the last couple of months, interest rates went up and I'm like, man, this is gonna be, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be an interesting situation to deal with the interest rates versus the rental guarantee. But one of the things that I didn't factor in was the increase in the rental market. So Truman allows you to opt out of this rental guarantee as you watch the market. And currently the tenant that they secured for me is paying them $2,300, which now I am going to take 100% of. And this allows me to still be uh, cash flow positive, even with today's rental, uh, with today's interest rates. Um, it, it is a phenomenal option. And Truman does provide the rental guarantee as a backup, but truly the, the rental market has increased significantly to allow me to still benefit from the, uh, the purchase. In addition to that, I didn't stop just with that townhouse because I encouraged the people that was closest to me, my family, uh, my, my wife's family, to also buy in. And all the um, properties that we purchased in Calgary, there's six in total, by the way, and four out of the six are in that northeast quadrant where we're going to see the highest population growth within Calgary. So we're poised to uh, see some really great returns. And I'm sure Alex is going to be talking a bit more about the Arthur Project, but that is in the northeast quadrant in a prime spot. So I, uh, I definitely encourage you guys to take a look at that project when he talks about it. Yeah, you know, and 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 just now we're chatting, and, and I hope I don't go go too far down a rabbit hole. But you know, you are of Southeast Asian descent. 
Um, and and when you, when you when you look at it, you know, when when your family migrated to Canada, did they move to an area where there were people of similar culture? Yeah, I mean, we, we tried to get into Yorkville. It didn't happen. <laughs> so we, uh, we, we wound up in Scarborough. And, and you're right, predominantly the, uh, the cultures and the backgrounds were very similar because as you migrate to Canada, you want some familiarity and you want to live in places where, you know, you have access to the type of thing that you're used to back home. So you're going to see a huge influx uh, of that um, ethnicity and background in the Northeast. Many of these individuals come with STEM backgrounds and engineering degrees yeah. and, and yeah. very well educated. So they're going to be making a lot of money. Yeah. Well, and, money. That, and that's where, and that's where the, te- like, and that, like when I, and I got to, for those that don't know, you know, when we talk about emphasis, when we talk about Infosys, which, which are large IT consulting firms, and, and even when I go into to our RBC and I, and I know this because we, because we, we, we manage rental units in Toronto and I see, I see the applicants come in and I know, I know what they are. Uh, the amount of consultants uh, that come, IT consultants that come from India are huge, huge, huge. So when, when we, when, and, and now that we're going to have the, that Amazon hub, that's going to be 10 minutes away from here. So when we, when we have uh, the, this big wave of immigration that's that's coming, this population boom, which is going to be fueled by immigration. And as you mentioned, it is STEM graduates, it's highly educated individuals. Um, and where do these individuals move to? They move into where their family, friends, and culture are going to be. And this is where this area, that's where we see that population growth that's happening in this Northeast quadrant. And we're going to continue to see it to grow. And Toronto and Vancouver are going to get their people, but our cities are incredibly expensive. So that's where the affordability is in Calgary. So now I'm looking at it. If I'm sitting in another country and I'm bringing my family over here, and why am I bringing my family to Canada? Because it's safe and boring, um, and that's very attractive. So I'm bringing can I'm bringing my family to Canada. Oh, Toronto, Vancouver, oh, very expensive, very expensive. Oh, Calgary, oh, I I, I can get a job here that pays me the same amount of money. Oh, my friends say say it's a good good place to live. Uh, my family says it's a good p- place to live. I start doing my research. Yeah, I want to I want to move there. And we see it in the in the statistics. I'm getting so excited. And we see it in the statistics. Canada population stats grow like that that they're going to get a million people over the next two decades in Calgary. You know that this is where the growth the growth is going to to be. Um, so I'm going to jump into and I'm, I'll leave you on niche and, and you can jump in and answer questions as well. Of so I'm just just opening up into the Q and A. Um, I'll go into the Q and A and then maybe I'll pop up some Arthur floor plans, uh, as well. And, and talk about pricing, um, comparing GTA to Calgary, a uh, wealth wise and financially, how do you think about it? Uh, well, they're different, right? So you want to invest in Toronto? No problem. With 20% down, you're not going to cash flow. Uh, from, from a capital investment standpoint, if you're buying something pre-construction, uh, you'll need at least $100,000 versus $40,000 here. Uh, when you close, you're going to need another, you know, beyond the 20% down that you have to put here and you'll be cash flow negative. You're, you're going to have to come up with another 60K worth of closing costs, which are which are zero there. Uh, your starting price point will probably be at least six to $700,000. They're just different. They're, 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 they're if you're investing in Toronto now, you may have maybe have someone of wealth and wants to own an asset in Toronto. I'm not worried about growth rates in Toronto. But when when I talked about in my my video, you know, why I started buying in Calgary, the, the explained in five minutes. If you just apply standard real estate fundamentals, you're looking for cash flow positive properties uh, in markets that have upside, right? Well, you don't have cash flow positive properties in Toronto. Okay. Um, I don't have an issue investing in Toronto, but you better make sure that you can cover the negative cash flow that you're going to get. In Calgary, I can invest with positive cash flow fundamentals and I can see upside, uh, which I think I've explained fairly clearly in the presentation so far with, with the growth in tech companies, uh, oil and gas revenues, um, and uh, population t- statistics that are projected by the, the federal government. Um, yes, the recording is going to be, uh, the webinar will be recorded. Um, how much are the monthly maintenance fees? Uh, 43 cents per square foot. 
uh, and that includes everything but hydro. Um, okay, so assignment clause. Don't. <laughs> so, so so yes. So I'll answer yes. You 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 have the ability to to assign the property, but why would you assign the property? It makes no sense to assign the property, and I'll tell you why. So if and these are tax laws. So if I were to sell the property on assignment in Calgary, I that would not be a capital gain. I would have to take all the profit and income. So that's number one. So if I sell it on a resale, I, I get capital. Uh, I get, it's a considered a capital gain. So I get a capital gain exemption. So I only have to take 50% of the profit and income. If I sell it on assignment, I have to take 100% of profit into income. Number two, if, on, if I sell an assignment, I have to pay 13, uh, I guess that there be different because it's it's Alberta. I still have to pay 5% tax on the, so the federal uh, GST, I have to pay 5% GST on the profit. If it's resale, I don't have to. So from a tax perspective, I, I'm, I have to pay twice as much tax if I sell it on, a, well, over twice as much tax, I factor in the 5% as well. I have to pay over um, double the tax. Number two on assignments, Assignments always sell on a discount compared to the resale market because typically uh, if someone's buying an assignment, they're bu it's going to be another investor. So they want to get some sort of perceived deal on there. Um, num and then I go back to number three. It doesn't make any sense. So why, why don't I just close on the property and you could literally sell it the next day. So let's, let's say you close on October 3rd. October 4th, you could sell the property and then you're paying 50% tax versus 100% tax on the profit. So it makes absolutely zero sense to assign. I'd say you're only using the assignment as an escape clause if you wanted to get out of the deal and allow someone to take the deal on for you. Uh, you're you're better off buying and holding and closing. And that's also why that I, I show that first slide up there. I, I show the portfolio, I show the value in 30 years. because I want to see, yeah, maybe you can make a few dollars on selling an assignment, but you're not going to get wealthy. Like, let's get wealthy. Let's build real wealth through real estate. Um, so, uh, so someone asking, uh, investing in suburbs has higher potential than, than downtown. Uh, so downtown in Calgary is more expensive than, than if I'm buying in, in suburban locations. Um, and if we look, and then if we go, if we talk to s suburban quadrants, it, literally the highest growth area is the Northeast quadrant. So it's not the richest area. The, if, if I'm looking for the richest area, then I'd be looking more, more into the Southwest. The Southwest is the wealthiest area in Calgary, but the highest growth area that we've, the, the highest population growth area is actually the Northeast year over year. So, so from a growth perspective, Northeast um, would be your, your highest growth area. Cause again, that's where the new Canadians are going. Uh, that's where they're looking. Uh, yeah. So how easy to find reliable property management? Uh, if you're looking at property management in Calgary, uh, we have currently a negotiated deal for 9.5%, uh, per month on the, on the gross monthly rent, uh, though I am working at other things in the background as well, um, which may have a lower cost, but I can't commit to that today. Uh, will pre-sale prices go down in Calgary as interest rates increase as people shy away from buying because of increased rates? Uh, no, uh, because, uh, the buildings are more expensive to build. So, uh, you're, you're, you're not, and you, you haven't seen prices go down. You're, 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 you're continuing to see prices go up. Um, not, not only in the, um, the pre-construction market, you're seeing in the resale market as well. So prices in, in the Calgary condo market are going up. They're going up um, in value. And why is that? Well, it's still low price points. We're not talking about Toronto prices. We're not talking about Vancouver prices. Uh, we're talking about Calgary prices, which, which are much, much lower. Um, so no, we're not, we're not seeing prices go down. On top of that, this is in 2027. So in, the, our most recent project is 2027. Um, in 2027, you're going to be past this interest rate cycle. You're going to see interest rates start going down at some point in 2023, um, probably near the end of 2023. And you'll probably see interest rate increases stop uh, probably at the beginning of 2023 um, as we enter uh, a recessionary period. Um, and I can tell you, I was sitting beside someone yesterday. I, I'm, I'm in a um, 
in a program called Strategic Coach. And the person I was sitting beside, he runs a company um, and they do, uh, it's not maintenance. They, they, they do, a, they, they basically go, one of his largest, his clients are refineries for like Exxon Mobile, that kind of thing. He, he's from Texas. He lives in Houston. And sorry. So he, he, he talks to all the, ex, the, the oil executives. Um, and he says that we're going to go to $150 a barrel of oil and again. So, um, if it hits $150 a barrel of oil, uh, the fortunes of Alberta are just going to go through the roof. And these, these aren't provinces. This is me talking to someone, but this is someone that owns, that's running a $200 million company. Um, and they do what, what the job, what the company does is they do, um, they would go into a refinery and they go, we can make your refinery run more efficiently is essentially what it is. Um, it's an engineering, engineering firm. So just some, some insight on the, on the ground. Uh, which area in Calgary is the best to invest in? Uh, again, um, the Northeast quadrant has seen the, the highest growth. Um, there are other people that, that like the core of downtown Calgary. Um, it just depends. For people worried about noise from the, oh, I can tell you, no noise from the airport, none. There is no noise in the airport. Great question. So, so because this location is close to the airport, um, I toured the area this summer. I didn't even know there was an airport there. Um, you, you didn't hear anything, anything from the airport. So uh, no concern from, from airport noise. So what you get the advantage of being the proximity to the airport um, from a uh, commuting standpoint. So again, if we're talking about IT consultants, professionals that may need to travel um, overseas uh, or nationally to, let's say, Toronto, Vancouver, or Montreal, or, or other quadrants, Ottawa, um, you got the proximity to the airport, but there, there was no noise. Uh, how do you sell a property if you live in Ontario and won't be going there? Can you talk about how much agents charge for commission in Calgary? I can tell you, I sold one. Bought, bought and sold one, I didn't go to Calgary. Um, I went to Calgary this summer to tour locations, but it, I, I bought my property in t March 2021 and I sold it in March 2022. I didn't go to Calgary until July and my property had closed by April. Um, so bought and, bought and sold. Didn't, didn't even go there, use the local agent. Um, and that would just be what you negotiate with the local agent for, for a fee. Um, yeah, didn't go there. Didn't go there and sign any documents, not at all. Uh, real estate lawyer, you'd be using a real estate lawyer in Calgary. Um, these are provincially regulated. Uh, so uh, you can't use a lawyer in Ontario. You got to use a lawyer in Calgary. But again, you don't need to go to Calgary for the closing. Um, you can just do it over Zoom here. Uh, any projects or semis, uh, towns with walkout basement ready or coming in the near future? Um, if you're interested in semis, uh, we do have um, some semis available. Uh, if you, um, if I guess the someone told me the the chat isn't working. Uh, am I able to? show chat previews. Um, but no, but if you're on here, you got my email. So if you're interested, interested in semi, send me an email, and then we'll send you more details on the semis that we have available. And these semis uh, that we have, we have two options. Um, one wouldn't have the basements, and then we have one with the basements. And when I say with the basements, they have um, basement rental uh, secondary suites. Uh, do I find it harder to close a mortgage when you start owning your fourth or fifth properties? Nope. No. Uh, again, send, send me an email. I'll introduce you to my people. If you, if you walk into a bank and, um, and, 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 and specifically if, if, if you buy, buy in holding companies as well, um, if you walk into a bank and deal with the person that's sitting in the branch, uh, they're a jack of all trades, right? So they're, they're used to doing, let's say, a mortgage for that nice couple that's buying their first house. They're not used to doing the finances uh, or the financing for um, an investor. 
um, that owns multiple properties. Uh, so uh, the, the, you just got to know who to go to and uh, not, not an issue at all to getting mortgages for your fourth and fifth rental properties. You just need to know the right people to talk to that know how to do these deals. Um, and I, I can put you in touch with the, with the right bank people. I can put you in touch with the mortgage brokers that do it. Um, not an issue at all. I uh, just need to know who to talk to. That's all. So send me an email and I can introduce you to those people. And that's also the beauty of when you buy pre-construction is that you can scale these up quickly, right? Like you can buy, I can buy four or five condos this year. And, and if I know one's closing or an uh, anticipated close in 2024, one's going to close in 2025, one's going to close in 2027, uh, I'm not worried about closings. I just kind of look at it at the beginning of each year and go, oh, you know, what closings do I have to prepare for this year? Um, and that's a great thing about pre-construction. I'm just putting a deposit down. I'm not dealing with the mortgage today. Uh, oh, there. the next question, would it better to buy an investment of, uh, or rental properties under an corporation or as an individual? Um, depends. If you are a self-employed individual that owns a um, incorporated company, then uh, it may make more sense for you to buy rental properties under a holding company. Um, if you're just a T Ford individual, uh, T Ford meaning that you get a salary for from a company, uh, then it would just buy it as an individual. Um, that makes that makes more sense. Uh, there there are tax advantages for someone that someone that owns an operating company um, to to buy and holding companies. Um, that's a whole nother presentation that I can get into. It's not hard. I, I buy all my properties and holding companies. Niche just started. Um, but again, um, I won't get too much into that uh, today. Um, it just depends on your financial structure. What do I think of Airdrie and Chestermere? Well, Chestermere would be my preference because it's proximity to Calgary. It's literally on the border of Calgary. Um, I call it the Oakville of um of Calgary. And that's where we do have uh, some semis available uh, for sale currently. Uh, so again, if you're, in, if you are interested in Chestermere, send, send me an email back, reply to me, uh, and then I can let you know what we have, currently have there. For Arthur. So Arthur is our current project. Uh, each unit does come with parking and, and, and an, not, they're not all underground. Um, there are some surface spots with the units. Those are typically the lower, the lower cost, smaller units. I'll have an outdoor service spot. Um, uh, but the majority of parking spots are underground and includes one parking spot. If you want to buy a second spot, it's 15 K and that's a surface spot. Not sure if you answered this already, but what's the tax rate on investment property in Calgary if you're from Ontario? I'm not sure the question. Tax rate on what? On the, on the, on the rental income? Um, not sure. Uh, the, speak to your accountant. How, depending how you set it up. So what I I set up a whole I set up a holding company in in Alberta for myself. But again, I'm I have an operating company. Uh, you don't need to do what I did. Um, no, we don't have any commercial product for sale. If you have four or five properties to invest in Calgary, do you think it's better to incorporate or invest under a corp? Again, it if you are. Uh, Again, I have, uh, I'm at three. Yes, I have three more properties coming up because I sold the one uh, and I will be buying them all in a corporation uh, and I'm looking to buy more in Calgary. Um, but again, if you're, if you're just a regular individual, uh, then there isn't really a tax advantage to you. So when, when you buy in a corp, that means you got to file a, a corporate tax return every year. You, you got to set up the corporation. So my, that costs money, probably about 2000 bucks. And then you got to file a corporate tax return every year, which would be fifteen hundred to two thousand bucks. So there, there, there is a uh, a cost associated with 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 having a corporation. So it just it just depends on your 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 financial status. And here's the great thing: you don't need to decide right now. So you can just put your name on it. Uh, wait, wait, Niche, did you just uh, me? I did the same thing. Niche and me, when we bought our properties that we closed on, we put our names on them. And then before closing, we switched them to holding companies. So you don't need to decide that today, how you're going to do the ownership. Um, you can do your due diligence. So you, you could just do it under your name today and you can switch that after the fact. Yeah, and just to chime in, Alex, because it's in five years. Like this particular project's in five years. Your financial situation might change. Who you work with or if you start your own business, all that will change. So as Alex mentioned, 
that decision isn't necessary right now. As you get closer to your closing time frame, then you can adjust as needed. There we go. Um, is short-term rental allowed in Arthur? Yeah. There. Okay. So here's a great thing. So I so I get questions like, oh, you know, what what buildings can I do short-term rentals in in Toronto? You can't. <laughs> Airbnb is not allowed in, in, in Toronto. It's, it's only allowed in, in the property you live in. Okay. So you essentially can't do it in condos. And I can tell you the condos on my hand that actually allowed Airbnb in Toronto, but technically from city bylaws, you're not allowed doing it. Right. Unless you're renting your second bedroom to someone and you're only allowed to do X number days a year. Now, do people still do it? Yeah. Like what's the monitoring level in Toronto? Like how, efficiently is it done um well i i can i can tell you this like buildings that don't allow it they they monitor it quite closely um but how how the city of toronto is monitoring it and i know it is not the question um you know i don't know but in in calgary in alberta you know again it's it's a business friendly environment so yeah you're allowed to do short-term rentals in uh in arthur um, so back to the tax deduction question. Well, it, if you live if you live in Ontario, then you're gonna you're gonna be paying Ontario tax on the uh, on the sale. And I think that was the last question. Now, I, I guess I should probably um, I'm gonna open up the the Arthur floor plans quickly. Okay, so you see so you see here, you see here the the. Uh, the efficient, how efficient the the floor plans are. So look at this A model. I walk right, I walk right in. I got my den here on the right. Um, window windows in both bedrooms. No wasted space. Uh, these models here are starting in the um, 350, 360 range. Then we get into our 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 B models. Uh, our beam. Uh, there we go. B models. These these are. Are, are you you're getting into the more investment friendly? Um, I shouldn't say investor friendly, um, but these are your, your your small two bedroom units. So two bedroom, one bath, six seventy eight square feet. You know, these these A models, they're seven fifty seven forty six seven fifty six square feet, just depending on where they are in the building. Um, the C model, always popular. Um, these are these are three bedroom units, uh, eight ninety three square feet. Um, windows again, each each bedroom. So I just walk right in, no wasted space, large generous balconies. And then the uh, the D model again, another small uh, two bedroom unit, uh, six ninety one uh, square feet. So these, uh, from a pricing standpoint, the C model start uh, into the high threes to to mid fours, depending on the floor. Uh, and then uh, then we get into the D models, um, the D models, D models, and the B models. That's you're starting in the low to mid three hundreds with these. And again. Each one of these includes a, a parking spot uh, with them. Um, getting into the uh, deposit structure here, uh, when we look at the, they're, they're here, yeah, so you get an idea of the pricing here. Um, you have two options for deposit structure. You can put uh, a total of 10% down in 90 days, so $20,000 um, on signing and 10%, uh, the balance of 10% in 90 days. Option two, you could do 15% in 180 days and they'll give you a free locker. Um, when you go uh, with that um, option. And again, you're going to be getting all the details in Arthur e emailed over to you. And and uh, one of the uh, Wealth Builder team members can jump on a call with you and, and walk you through the, the project in more depth if you're interested. Uh, I'll just pop back to the question and answers again here. Um, um, yeah, again, anyone that has an interest in semi, uh, townhome or semis, uh, send me an email. Um, uh, if you are a real estate ag agent, send me an email. Um, someone, so, uh, and again, oh, someone asking hard to see again, you, you will get, if, if you sign, if you signed up, uh, for this, which you have, you have my email, um, you'll get, you'll get an email back. Um, if you just want to really make sure you get it, just send me an email specifically, just send me an email, uh, and, and I'll, I will, uh, email you anything that you request. But this is someone that asked about the floor plans. Again, you'll get all, you'll get all of that sent to you. Um, advantage of downtown over suburbs. Uh, it's just different. It, they're just 
just completely different locations. I will say the one thing about downtown Calgary is it's where Toronto was in 2022, you know, in like 20, 2007, right? Like it's, it's not as developed, nowhere near as developed as downtown Toronto. Um, still a lot of parking lots down there and everything like that. Um, but that, that's also where all the tech companies are. So the majority of the tech companies are right downtown. Um, but people are attracted to suburban living in, out in Calgary. So, and downtown is going to be more money than, than, than sub suburban Calgary. So they're, they're just really different. Uh, so how far is this from downtown to be a 20, but, but niche about 25 minute drive downtown. Yeah. When I did the, um, when I did the Google traffic map, it was, it was under 20 minutes, it's like 18, 19 minutes. Yeah. And, you, and you're right off of the ring. So what, what Calgary has, it, it has a highway system called the ring right around it. So you're right off of the ring. So anywhere you need to get in Calgary, you can literally get there in 20 to 25 minutes. Cause you just jump on uh, onto the ring. Um, yeah, all, all the rental guarantee amounts will be included uh, in the email. Um, someone asking about what, what's the, do you know what the closest uh, public transportation will be? Nish? But, uh, but I'll say this, when you're in this location, you're going to have a car. So public transportation isn't, it, it isn't as important because I know you'll have a car in this location. And Calgary is still very much a car based uh, city. Uh, so having public transportation close is, is nice, um, but everyone has a car and, that, and that's why having a parking included is important. Oh, see, I think it's about three to four minutes to one of the one or two lines. I have to verify what that is, but it, it isn't far at all. Yeah. Because you, so you know, people arrive by, by plane close to the airport. Of course, the transit needs to, to be conducive to people that need to get downtown as yeah. they travel down. Yeah. So, so, so I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here now because we've taken enough of your time. We're, we're already over, over an hour. Um, this has all been recorded. So it'll all be sent to you as well. In that email, you have an opportunity to book a call with one of us. Um, we'll answer any questions you have. And I'll also include information on our latest development, um, the Arthur. And if you do have interest in semis, um, or Rose, send me an email and we can get you more information on those too, uh, because we do have those as well. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for attending and, and taking time out of your night. It's, 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 it's much appreciated. Nish, thanks for taking time for jumping on the call. Thank you everyone. And you'll hear from us soon. Okay. Thanks, Talk guys. to everyone later. Everyone leaving. Take care. Bye.